Welcome back to the Missing Maura Murray podcast. I'm Tim, here with Lance. Lance, what's up tonight? Not too much. How are you tonight? I'm doing fine. We're here, and we are going to answer a few emails from our lovely listeners, who are incredible people, very patient people. Um, But the majority of this episode, we're going to play an interview that we recorded a few weeks ago with the guys from True Crime Garage, Nick and Captain. And we did about an hour and 10 minutes of an interview with them on Crawl Space, our other podcast. But about a half an hour of it was so Maura Murray centralized that we said um, we need to put this on the Maura Murray channel. Just in case any people out there aren't listening to Crawl Space, which really you should be. I don't know what's going on if you're not. But if you're not, you're going to get it here, this interview with True Crime Garage, at least the Maura Murray part. I want to come back a little bit to what you were saying about the listeners being patient and echo those sentiments. Uh, Thank you, listeners, for being patient. There are things going on behind the scenes that make what we discuss a little limited, and I'll leave it at that. This interview uh, was more like like a little hangout that we had with True Crime Garage was just a breath of fresh air, really, to um, to kind of kick back and talk to people that are in this industry about this case and about other cases. So if you heard what we did with them on Crawl Space, awesome. Thanks for listening to that. What you'll hear now is, like you said, a little bit more um, Maura Murray-centric. Yeah, and just in case you did hear that interview on Crawl Space, we don't want to leave you hanging for this week, so we're going to read some emails uh, because we, we get a bunch of emails still, um, which is awesome. And please, if you have any thoughts, any anything you want to tell us, please email us at missingmoramurray at gmail.com. Those emails are always encouraged. Before we play the interview or the conversation with or the hangout, uh, the Brodeo with True Crime Garage, um, let's just uh, let's go over a few of these questions. What do you say? I think that's a fantastic idea. It, it, it the, the timing does work out with us reading emails because in the beginning we promised that this is what we would do. Uh, every once in a while you have to stop and you have to assess where you're at. And we can't possibly answer every single email that has uh, been sent to us after people listen to, say, episode five or six or seven, right? I, you'd, you'd just be answering the same thing. So hopefully if we take the topics that have been emailed to us, we can cover a, a bunch of the emails with one with one email you know what i mean if they're talking about the airbag that covers 10 emails that we got about the airbag right exactly good point um and and good that you brought up the airbag because that's one of the most common emails that we get actually and i think we have addressed it before but um let's do it again so we we got an email from robert who asked about the passenger side airbag he says both airbags deployed in the crash wouldn't that mean that there was a second person in the passenger seat at the time of the crash? Because as we know, the cars today have sensors in the passenger seat and you, you know your car is going to beep if the passenger in the passenger side doesn't have their seatbelt on. So the, car, the cars today are so smart that they know if a passenger is in the passenger seat. However, in 1996, Morris Saturn, it did not have that alert system there was a mandate that was put into place and it is not necessarily true that there was someone in that passenger seat that set off the airbag as a matter of fact it very well could have been a bag that had some weight to it it didn't have to be anything with weight it would have gone off if there was nothing in that seat exactly it went off yeah It, it went off no matter what this does not answer any question about faith westman's identification of a man smoking a cigarette in the in the car so we can see how the two come together they correlate if you look at the airbag going off and you look at the transcription of for faith westman when she called um 911 she does say that she saw a man in the car smoking a cigarette this could just easily be her 
assuming it's a man and assuming that some light is a cigarette but you're saying that because of that in the transcripts the man in the car smoking a cigarette and the passenger side airbag going off some people automatically think well that means there was a person in the passenger seat that wasn't seen by butch atwood or faith westman or things like that i would add that it's possible that there was a person in the passenger seat but what we're saying is it's not necessarily true. It's not definitely true that there was someone in the passenger seat because the passenger airbag went off. In fact, by all accounts, there was, well, I'm sorry, not by all accounts, but by almost all accounts, there was only one person in the car. Exactly. To, to put that a different way, by one account, there was a man smoking a cigarette in the car. By every other account, Mora was alone. Another email we got from another person named Rob, actually. Um, This person emailed a couple times, basically telling us that he can get us an interview with Fred Murray and sort of insulting us, um, saying that the show is going nowhere and we need a big score and do you want Fred on your show and I can get him for you. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that you brought this email up. It's kind of, I'm glad you brought this email up. Yeah, because well, I have a lot to say about it. Yeah, it was a, it was a bit, it was a bit shocking when we got the email. First of all, there's references to the Oxygen Show. There's references to a note that this gentleman left on Reddit. He then continues to criticize the direction of the show in the past couple of months, and almost as if to to make us feel like self conscious about the what we're doing lately. And then comes in with the, you know, the uppercut of you need some, you need a big splash. I can get you Fred. What do you say? And it just, it's it, suggesting that we're letting down anybody out there who's listening, knowing what we know behind the scenes, it's worth it. In the next few months, it'll be worth it. But to suggest that and then back that up with, you need to get Fred. This is this is such a, you know, throw your line in the water with a bobber and a worm, and you're, you're hoping to God that we bite on that. And if this person does actually know Fred, he would know that Fred Murray would never appear on this podcast. So <laughs> not only would Fred Murray, not only that, which is fine. But yeah, it, it really is fine. But if you if you know Fred and you're going behind his back and saying, Okay. There's so many things wrong with this. Fred Murray would never would never assign somebody to say, hey, go tell these guys that their show's losing direction and it, and I'm going to be the, the big fish that they're going to land on their show. Um, we know that that is absolutely not going to happen or possible. Um, and then to if, if that isn't the case, then we're left with you're going behind Fred's back and you're saying I'm going to manipulate him and try to get him to be on your show, which sucks. So or you're lying. Yeah, I don't know what to make of it. Um, we appreciate the the listens and uh, and the emails. So uh, thank you, Rob. Yeah, thank you, Rob. I'm also getting a little fired up about this. We get another email from someone named Chris, who said they they really love the podcast, but there's one meta criticism, and they don't like when we refer to people as males or females rather than men or women. Person seems like a really thoughtful listener. I I can only imagine um, because he says it here that that it, it seems dehumanizing if we call someone male or female as opposed to a man or a woman. So uh, we, we appreciate that email. Thank you, Chris. What do you think, Lance? Once again, I you know you work in this vacuum of this echo chamber this of what we do, right? And you think you're saying the right thing. I remember a long time ago, we we kept saying Mora was, you know, a missing girl from UMass. And finally, someone was called us out and said, please stop calling this 21-year-old, this 22-year-old woman a, a girl. She's not a girl. Um, and so it always, it, it surprises me what the uh, meta criticisms are and how, you know, what we say if we keep repeating it, yeah, I can see how it would grate on people. And I do appreciate this, actually. I think it's not, you know, it's clearly not intentional. We're not trying to dehumanize or compare humans to livestock. So know that know that this is not intentional. Um, moving forward. 
we'll do our best. I, yeah. I'm trying to remember when we said males and females. Like I don't remember, but uh, but we will do our best. Maybe it is a little impersonal, so we'll do our best on that. Another email from Dee Dee. Um, a, a short email says, please stick to true crime and stop bashing the president. Um, and this one, I believe, has to do with the John Ronson interview uh, that we had. And it was really part two where we talk about Trump. And and we made a point in the Crawl Space version and the Crawl Space intro to say, please save your political tweets and emails because we're not actually talking about politics. We're talking about the personalities involved in politics. And I, I still firmly believe that that's what we did there. I mean, I'll disagree a little bit with that. I, I do agree it's not relevant to express opinions. and But the stick to true crime, true crime is what you do, not politics. Laws are being broken right now in, in our government, so that is kind of true crime. Um, sometimes the topic if, does stray if a little bit. Laws, if laws. If are be- laws yeah. are being broken right now, sure. then that applies to true crime. Sure. But we will do our best. Sometimes when you're speaking with a guest uh, and the topic goes beyond what is intended and you realize that you are still having a good conversation that is probably maybe not enjoyable, but listenable and interesting for everybody, then you continue it until you you wrap it up. It's better to approach every topic and talk about it and then get emails like this than to be nervous about talking about anything. And I'm actually I'm pretty happy and uh, and delighted, really delighted actually that that was the only email that we got about that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so that was cool. But most people understood uh, that that we weren't really taking a political stance there. And again, our polit- our politics mean nothing to you guys, and we get that. So we're not going to force our political beliefs down anyone's throat. Someone named Melody emailed us about the Wrangling Renner episode, episode f- forty two. And we got a few emails about this, um, people saying that they were a little bit upset at this episode, and specifically the part where we mentioned Mora is a survivor, and that she would stay and fight instead of running, which is what James Renner uh, said she did. She ran from Billy, is, is James's theory. So we challenge him in that episode, in episode 42. We did get some emails and tweets about it. Um, people saying that that's not necessarily true. Survivors would run at, at periods. So just wanted to acknowledge this. And, and I, I suppose that's a, obviously a mistake if we're generalizing to say a certain thing definitely happens to all people. Right. I'm glad that we're addressing this email because that's been something that's been kind of a thorn in my side uh, personally. I When... We were in the middle of this heated discussion about whether or not Mora was, uh, you know, not a psychopath or or a psychopath or and Renner had said, I think she's a survivor. And I was trying to it was me that said, well, survivors don't run like survivors will stay and fight. And then I realized that that was just something that I said that was I just wanted to say that in that situation, I don't believe that anybody who you can classify as a survivor would run. I think that anybody in that situation that you're classifying as a survivor is somebody who will stay and and assemble the people that support them, like like friends and family. Because what we're talking about is Mora being pregnant with an unwanted child or being pregnant with a child by an unwanted father. And the only person that she has to fight is the father and possibly the father's family or friends. And and if you are a survivor in that situation, I just don't see somebody running. I didn't mean to generalize that survivors don't run. If, if, if situations are far beyond an individual's control and running is the only alternative to dying, then yeah, run. You know, that's what you're going to do. But um, I think I was just talking a little too fast and my brain was possibly not keeping up with my mouth at that point. But definitely didn't mean to generalize people who are survivors on a whole as not running. I mean, look at marathons. Like, those are survivors. (laughs) You know, they run. Like, if you're going to, like, a literal definition of it. Lance, 
I have discovered this new bedding. I, I know it sounds weird to talk to you about bedding, but have you heard of Brooklinen? I've not only heard of Brooklinen, but uh, I'm experiencing Brooklinen. I'm sure you're experiencing it as well. You spend a third of your life in your sheets. Are they taking care of you the way they should be? I hope so. Well, with Brooklinen.com, you can get the high quality sheets and bedding you deserve at a price that won't keep you up at night. Uh, I get what they're doing there. It won't keep you up at night because of the great sleep you're going to get. So other than the 30 year life thing, why, why can't I just go down the street to my local department store and get some sheets? Well, Brooklinen was founded in 2014 by husband and wife team Vicky and Rich on the philosophy that people deserve simple, beautiful home essentials without the luxury price. Maybe the mom and pop atmosphere is enough to persuade you? I think that and the versatile colors, the patterns, you can mix and match. If you go to their website, you can mix and match effortlessly to complement any decor or decor. This is luxury bedding underpriced. You have to try these sheets today. I will try these sheets tonight after we're done this. And and you'll try them, and I know you'll love them too. And I'm not meaning you, I mean you, the listener. Right, because I already have them, and I know I love them. Brooklinen.com has an exclusive offer just for our listeners. Get $20 off and free shipping when you use promo code MMM at brooklinen.com. In fact, Brooklinen is so confident that you'll love your new sheets that they offer a risk-free 60-night satisfaction guaranteed and a lifetime warranty on all their sheets and comforters. There's no reason not to give these sheets a try. The only way to get $20 off and free shipping is to use promo code MMM at brooklinen.com. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Promo code MMM. Brooklinen. These are the best sheets ever. Ever. One from Michelle. Uh, a nice email mentions that they really like the podcast congrats on the oxygen show which um you know shouldn't really be a congrats to us it really should be a congrats to you guys because it's actually you guys uh that made the show happen the again and we, we mentioned this before but it's the interest that you have in this case that made this show and this new investigation possible so i i thank you for your congratulations but i throw it right back at you This person also mentioned that they signed the change.com petition asking for FBI involvement. And then they went a step further and contacted retired FBI agent Jim Clemente's Twitter. Uh, Jim Clemente does his own podcast and he also writes for Criminal Minds. Um, So kind of a big shot. And he was at CrimeCon. And and Lance, we really didn't get to meet Jim Clemente. Um, but he does sound like he would be a great person to talk to and a great guest for us at some point. Yeah, Jim would be a great guest for us to have on the show. Uh, so I guess this is kind of the informal request. Um, he's appeared on a number of podcasts and he's got his own podcast, uh, Real Crime Profile, which is excellent. Uh I want to back up a little bit and just also say that uh, we did mention this at CrimeCon that the congratulations, like you said, shouldn't be on us Uh there was a time when we thought that all of the input that we were receiving on Morris case was basically uh, misinformation and us being trolled. But once it was funny, right? I mean, a lot of those, a lot of that troll stuff just started to go away. And the people that cared about the case who had good information, who would give a theory, and then we'd say no, because of this and this, they'd say, oh, I understand. And then they'd come back with something else. And we'd say, oh, we never thought of that. Then we'd analyze it behind the scenes and realize this might be something that hasn't been looked at in the past. We're experiencing that right now. So it really is. I mean, this whole new investigation just happens to be done by a a television production company. But if that's what it takes to bring closure, then that's what it takes. It really, is the information that the people who listen to this show and responsibly think about this um that's that's where the congratulations should be and it's it's really exciting to know and and i wrote this on the facebook discussion page um for our uh, podcast recently but that this tv show is they're uncovering things they're they are answering a lot of the nagging questions that this community has had and it's 
really exciting to be able to tell you guys that. I and and, and we really need you to believe it because it's true. It's not just us um, pimping Oxygen Network. Like we're we're not getting paid by Oxygen Network to say this. This is that's not what this is. We're we really feel this way. This is a great production company and and network that took a real chance on a case that we believe was solvable. Right. And at the time that they took that real chance on it, we had been discussing pretty much simultaneously how this case was on the brink of becoming folklore and beyond cold case, unsolvable Lady of the Dunes type folklore. Um, And then they come aboard. We establish a relationship We start understanding where they're coming from, how much they care, and it's really done a 180 as far as solvable or not solvable. And believe us when we say that if we didn't have all of the best intentions of both you and I and Oxygen Network in mind, we would have broken a contract a long time ago But because for the better part of the last few months – we haven't been able to say certain things. Right, and it's really just the stuff that we're doing with the Texas crew and Maggie and Art and the investigation that's going on behind the scenes. That's really the stuff that we can't talk about yet because it's going to be on the TV show, and that's that probably is obvious to you guys. But that show is airing soon, and supposedly the air date is September. So we're only a month away, a little bit more than a month away from this information coming at you and actually lance and i have talked about this very many times over the years we've looked into this the information flow in this case comes at us like waves and it comes at you guys like waves i'm not sure if you noticed this but it comes at you like waves and right now this period of time is sort of like the time where the ocean pulls back before it unleashes a giant wave. And that is what is gonna happen with this new TV show. A giant wave of information is coming at you. And that is a promise. Right, what you're talking about is the ebb and flow of the show. And even before we started this uh, podcast on a serious level, we had often discussed, wow, we would go a month and a half, two months without, without anything after the ebb, pretty much right around the time when we would acknowledge that, you know, wow, it's been pretty dry lately. There's there's not a whole lot of stuff going on. It would be this 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 wave, like you said, this flow of of information, whether it's coming from John Smith or coming from from Aaron Larkin or any of the people who contribute to this. Uh, and then we'd be right back into it and 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 riding that wave again. And this is the the biggest ebb and flow that we've experienced. Two other quick emails I want to mention because they're common emails that we get. Mike Lavoy is someone that we get emailed about a lot. And it's because of the different podcast called Someone Knows Something. And I guess on season two, there's someone named Mike Lavoy who is a potential suspect in that case. That is not the same Mike Lavoy as the person who towed Maura's car the night of her disappearance. Uh, we have tweeted this out, but uh, but we do still get emails about it, and we appreciate all the emails. Um, so you're listening closely. We really appreciate that. So thank you very much. It is not the same Mike Lavoy. Also, episode 18 is not for listening right now. Yeah, we purposely took it offline ourselves because the blogger we interviewed, who will remain nameless, went on to write some really messed up things about the Mari family, about us, and about the listeners of this show and the followers of this community. So he is not someone that we want to promote in any way, shape, or form. But with that said, I kind of feel like we should re-release episode 18. Yeah, I'm good with re-releasing episode 18. Really? Yeah, just kind of know that it's like the the 13th floor in uh, some some uh, hotels or apartments. <laughs> if it's, you know, you just, you're like, oh, it's the 13th floor. I know I'm on the 14th floor and that's actually the 13th floor. But hey, whatever, you know, I'm just going to go with it. Just kind of go with episode 18 is... Uh, out there in the ether and and um you know it's like you know what it kind of is it's kind of like in superman when they put the the three bad guys into this into that like 
two dimensional plate glass thing and sent them out into the space and they were like they couldn't get out of it that's kind of what i picture episode 18 to be i don't remember that part in in superman but uh, no look at yeah. <laughs> google that yeah nah, they nah, that's yeah okay. they no, it's it's a fun scene. It's nah, a fun scene. Nah, g- g- um, give me a I, Batman comparison. But yeah, I know. I'm sorry, and I don't want to promote this too much on uh, missing more Murray, but I do want to mention that Crawl Space and the Nighttime Podcast are collaborating on a live show. We have several very cool and stimulating topics that we're going to discuss that night. It's at 10 p.m. in Davis Square, Somerville, at the Rockwell Theater. If you look in the show notes or on our Twitter, you can find where to buy tickets. Check this show out. We have some guests that are going to really make you want to be there, ask them questions. We're very excited about it. It's our first show that we're doing live. Uh, We chose to do it in a small theater venue that's very intimate. So you'll definitely get your voice heard if you you come out. That's August 18th, Rockwell Theater. Davis Square, Somerville, 10 p.m. And in the show notes and on Twitter, you'll see where to buy the tickets. I do want to uh, I do want to bring up one quick uh, email that piqued my interest a little bit about the satellite images. And it's from a lady named Charlotte. And I just love the amount of thought that people put into these th- this investigation and they put into the show. Uh, she's she says she's only on episode 25. But maybe it comes up eventually. And as far as I know, this has not come up. Uh, She was speaking to her husband and he suggested accessing NASA satellite images for for that area in New Hampshire or maybe even the entire route. Um, She says that uh, she originally told him that the idea of this was ridiculous. But these are the things that we really want to encourage people to think of it's something that you might think is ridiculous in this case to help um, gather information probably isn't that ridiculous we're on you know year 13 of her being missing going on 14 years so hey if you think that nasa satellite images might help somehow and accessing them if anyone's got any connections to do that send it our way anything it doesn't matter how ridiculous it doesn't take much to send an email and it doesn't take much for Tim and I to look at it and say, should we look into this? Yeah. Great point. Thank you very much for mentioning that. And thank you very much for that email. And thank you very much for all the emails. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much for listening to this podcast. We hope you enjoy the half an hour where we talk to the true crime garage guys. We talk a little bit about Maura Mari. We talk a little bit about James Renner. It's a pretty fun conversation. And check out their podcast, True Crime Garage on iTunes and everywhere, truecrimegarage.com. Very good. We're not intentionally teasing the investigation that is part of the television show produced by Oxygen. It's where this investigation has to be at this point because it hasn't gotten any further in the 13 years that that to right now. So if it takes, and I keep saying this, and I'm sometimes redundancy is good, but if it takes a television show with some clout, with some investigative journalists, with former U.S. Marshals, with law enforcement, maybe this is exactly where it has to be. So keep supporting it. Keep supporting this because it hasn't. nothing's been done that's made any real movement in the past 13 years except for this. Beachbody On Demand is an online fitness streaming service that gives you unlimited access to a wide variety of highly effective, world-class workouts personalized to meet your needs, plus extensive nutritional content all proven to help people achieve their health and fitness goals. With step-by-step program guides, workout calendars, comprehensive nutrition plans, and innovative portion control focused cooking show called Fixate, and the motivation and support of a growing community, Beachbody On Demand really is the total package. So for our listeners, what is the current state of your health and fitness level? What are your current health and fitness goals? For example, do you need to lose weight? Are you preparing for a specific event, like a marathon or vacation, a wedding? Do you need to improve your energy, general physical well-being? Are you already active, healthy, and fit, and simply want a more convenient health and fitness routine? 
Does an in-home fitness and nutrition resource like this make it more likely that you will stay with your goals versus trying and maybe failing when you go to the gym? Beach Body On Demand offers a wide variety of workout ranging from cardio to weight training, yoga, low impact, and even dance. So if you need help finding a workout style to match your interests and goals, you will find something here, trust us. Beachbody On Demand offers fully integrated programs, including step-by-step -step daily workout calendars and customized simple but proven eating plans. And Beachbody On Demand also allows flexibility to design your workout schedule from over 600 different workouts. Personally, Tim, when I started doing the P90X part of this program, I mean, within a couple of days, I already felt the increase of the increased energy. I mean, uh, the, the weight loss and pounds shedded off. I, I, I shredded. I mean, I know you don't think that I'm, that's possible with the peak physical condition that, that we've often discussed. But, you know, I didn't right, because you're already shredded. Right. I didn't think I could get more shredded. Yeah, I'm going to call you Shredder. You could call me Shredder. So this is a brand new service, but it already has over one million members. Our listeners can claim a free membership. Missing Maura Murray listeners, just text MMM to 303030 and get full access to this entire platform for free. Listeners, just text MMM. Again, just text MMM to 303030 for full access to this entire platform for free. Let's hear about your guys' experience uh, with James Renner and covering the Maura Murray case. Because you, you guys did, mm. was it three episodes or two episodes of it? I think we did two. Uh, well, we did, we did three episodes of the Maura Murray case, two with just me and the captain and one with uh, James Renner. Um, but, but what gets confusing is we actually did, we've had Renner on the show three times for different Four cases. Times. Four times? I think four times. Might have been four. Ah, uh, maybe three. I don't know. So he talked about some uh, touchy things with you guys. And at that point, it, it hadn't really been put out there. And of course, it was, uh, mm -hmm. if, if you're familiar with these episodes that you guys produced and, and the history of the Maura Murray case, uh, you'll know where we're going with this. But it was the allegations against Billy at his workplace. And so right. tell us a little bit about how that whole situation went down. Uh, from your guy's end. Well, I'll just give my, my perspective first. So it was cool because we reached out to him and he is about two and a half hours away. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, nobody knew who we were at the time. And he was like, yeah, I'll meet you. Uh, so I do some work at a studio. So we actually rented out that space to make him feel a little more comfortable. Um, so he shows up and he gets out of his car. And the first thing I think he sees is me like, oh, what the heck did I get myself into? Uh, this guy's big. Uh, then he goes in the studio, and it's it's top of line studio. I mean, all the all the remixes of uh, Led Zeppelin were done on that board. Uh, Eric Cl Eric Clapton recorded on that board. We uh we recorded some stuff with uh Twenty One Pilots at that studio. So it's a top of the line studio. So right when he walks in, he's like pretty comfortable, and it's just funny because he looks right at Nick and he goes, "Didn't you follow me out into a parking lot one time?" Which is true. Which is true. <laughs> Which what? is true. Is that a true story? Yeah. So I, I, here's how big of a true crime dork I am. All right. So <laughs> I, well before we did the show, and I still continue to do it to, to this day, but if there's a true crime author somewhere in the state of Ohio that's giving a presentation about a case, if I have the day off, I will drive two or three hours to go sit at the presentation. Uh, and I will, if I have some questions or some input, I will make a point to, to let you know what I think or, or ask for some more details or and stock you in the parking lot. They had kind of a very short, he was, he was at this thing up in, um, uh, I can't remember where it was, but I probably drove about an hour or so. And they had a very short Q and a afterwards where he sat off to the side and you had to approach him face to face. Well, there was a ton of old people there. So I try to be a nice dude and I let all the old, older people go first. Well, they cut off the line by the time I get up to the, to the table. So 
he leaves. I wanted to talk to him about Amy Mahalovic. And that's how I know James Renner from, that's how I got into him years ago. And so I, I start asking him questions as he's like putting away his stuff. And then next <laughs> thing I know, we're walking down the, you know, towards the door and I'm still asking him questions. Then we're in the parking lot and he's like trying not to, he's trying not to, uh, detect to me where his car is you know like he doesn't want he's like he's like and at some point he's like you know i have to go i have to I have to drive quite a ways and i was like yeah i do too i should probably leave. but yeah. but he's he's a super great guy and uh and we were very happy to have him on the show and, and you guys know this we're not telling you anything that you don't know well and the, the weird thing about it too is that for some reason in the true crime world not all the time but a big percentage of the time if you don't agree with somebody, then that person is the enemy. Right. And I think that to me is silly because, you know, I'm going to learn more about a case from somebody I don't agree with than somebody I do agree with every point. Um, but as far as your question goes, when he, I was interested to hear what he was going to talk about. And the, the other interesting thing was he told us before we started recording, uh, you know, I, I'm going to explain this information to you, but we had to stagger our release mm -hmm. because uh, some of this information was in the book and, and, you know, obviously to protect himself, you know, that that's what authors have to do. Uh, so, it, you know, we were hearing this information for the first time. He did the interview with us about two months before the book came out. Two months before the book came out. Yeah, so we yeah, okay. had to kind of sit quietly about what we yeah. heard, you know, during that interview. But, I mean, those are accusations, and if he feels strongly enough to accuse him of that, he sh must have evidence to back that up. He said Billy didn't uh, deny the allegations. That's that's really all I know about it. And he also said that there were the, the accusers talked to him, um... I don't know. Well, yeah, well, it's weird because, you know, your guys is, I told you uh, your last ep episode with him uh, on Missing Charlie Murphy, uh, <laughs> you, you guys kind of went after him. Uh, and, and I think we would have been more confrontational with him, but we invited this guy down. And, and Nick and Renner actually talked a lot about Amy Mihaljevic and uh, a couple other cases beforehand. Mm -hmm. So it's the last one we talked to him about. And we we're trying to be respectful. Like we, we brought him in to hear his viewpoints. Um, and we didn't want, we weren't like trying to ambush him and say, Hey, let's come in here and come to our turf and let's have an argument. I just wanted to hear his thoughts. Well, and the thing too, this is where you got to give him credit because you know, he's made a lot of accusations regarding th the death of Amy Mahalovic, but at the same time, he's made those accusations, but he's gone up on people's doorsteps at the middle of the night and knocked on the door with the, with only armed with a pen and paper and said, you know what? I think you did this. Do you got any answers for me? That's, that's something. I mean, that that's doing the legwork. Anybody can sit in a garage and say, you know what? This guy did this and he's a terrible person and I got no proof. And I've never even seen him face to face. Right. You know, it, it, James Renner has done the leg work, work, he's chased the boogeyman. I, maybe he's never caught the guy, but you know what I mean? He's, I give him credit yeah, for that. And and the people that don't like him about his uh, opinions on that particular case, you got to remember that with the Amy case, he was going after justice for a little girl. Mm -hmm. So uh, how can you not like somebody that does that? Uh, I think the Mara Murray case is different. I think it's a case that sucks you in. And I think, oddly, I think it becomes a case that you want the answers for yourself more than you want the answers for Mara. You know, because if she did go missing on her own, then why the heck are we talking about this? She doesn't want to be found. Uh, but it's a case that sucked me in because it's a, it, to me, it was, it's, a, it's a thought experiment. All, that's all it is. Give me a theory. Now let me go down a rabbit hole. Give me another theory. Let me go down a rabbit hole. And that's why your guys' show was so great. It was a, presenting a different rabbit hole every week. And then I just get lost in that one rabbit hole. Um, I don't agree with James Renner on a lot of things. Uh, and the best, <laughs> the fa my favorite part of the whole thing is 
um, you know, f- f- look, I, I talked to um, a college coach, uh, a listener of ours. He teaches uh, college soccer. And when we covered that case, he just emailed me. He said, here's my number if you want to call me. Called him, and he was trying to explain to me that you have to understand what um, Haas, that's his name, right? Mm-hmm. What he did was so beyond out of bounds. It's not a common thing. Not only could he lose his job, he could lose he could lose his degree. And not only could he, you know, he's going for a, uh, not under, undergraduate, but a graduate degree. They could actually suspend his undergraduate degree. And then they can sue him for all the money that he has taken. We're talking about hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars that the university could sue him and win. Not only that, but they can actually try to charge him with as some kind of sex offender, even though she would be of age because she was it was a student teacher relationship and they could go after with him with that. So if anybody has a motive, uh, that's the person that you, you know, you want to have your motive. And so when the whole stuff came up about the cabin and being linked to the school, the one thing I thought was funny. Uh, you know, as I talked to James and, and, and James Renner said, well, he's always my number one suspect. It's like, no, he wasn't. Billy's always been your number one suspect. And I, I think James Renner is a great storyteller. Uh, and I think sometimes he sticks to his th- thought process too closely. And sometimes he jumps off of it too quickly. Yeah. I have a, I have a quick question for you about the Haas situation. What is it that he could have gotten fired for? What is the thing that you're talking about? If he had a sexual relationship with a student, that is forbidden. Because he was an assistant then, track coach, right? Right. Right, but he but he's getting paid to be the track coach and he's getting paid for his graduate degree. Like they're helping him with housing, they're helping him with uh scholarship and tuition, but you you work for the university. And so this is not coming from me. This information about him having an affair with Mora, where did we hear this? From him. Well, from Renner. Exactly. We didn't hear it from. He's never come out and right. said anything. He's never other come than out what and Renner said has it. said. Right, but here's here, here's a couple issues. If if what he said to Renner is true, and look, I, I don't think Renner's a liar. I think he's a great author. I think he's a great dude. I don't think he's a liar. And he brought up all this stuff even when he wasn't trying to point the finger True. at Haas. Right. He was bringing up this stuff a long time ago. He was just sweeping under the rug because he didn't understand the seriousness of it. And when you have a university um, uh, coach con- you know, contact me and say, look, I am telling you that if that stuff happened, you have to understand how serious of offense that was. And I think this guy has been teaching uh, or coaching at a university for I don't know, 15 years or something. And he said, in my time of coaching, this has never happened. There's never even been rumors of it because even if there's rumors of that, maybe you're sleeping with a student athlete or whatever, that's bad for business. And I think it's look when you also move, he moved across country too to accept a job with a very good company. Yeah, I get that. But I'm just saying, I, I, I'm just saying that coming from a coach that's saying, hey, look, this is a serious accusation. And if this is true, then this guy definitely had a motive. And then also it gives us a reason why she's on the road she's on. Absolutely. All of that aside, and I agree with you on James. And and I, and I think because we have a, a relationship with James and we work well with him, and I feel like we're able to call him out on certain things, I feel like he takes his narrative right. a little too far. For example, uh, the Haas situation, the police officer who pulled, or I'm sorry, the police officer who Mora called and arrived at the scene for the first accident, also an unnamed source who claimed that there were orgies with the track team, these are these are things that he, he 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 put he puts out there and he says he says she left a party dr- got into mm-hmm. her dad's car got into an accident and he lets you think he lets you put that together and say she was drunk in an accident and then he says when i called the cop he hung up on me he hung up he hung up on james because he just didn't have anything else to say and as far as he knows james is a reporter and he didn't charge this girl with dwi because she wasn't drunk 
And but James will right. put it out there and say an unnamed source said that there were orgies at the track for the, with the track team. And she left this party, and she got into an accident, and it was two thirty. Put it together. I mean, she was drunk. So it's all of these things, and and I don't know what happened with Haas, and I don't know, you know, what the ramifications with that that would be. But I certainly, right. I don't think someone can go so psychotic so fast and say, "Wow, we we had sex, and if I get if I get caught, then I get fired. I have to owe money. Damn, I got to kill you." Like there's other there's other ways to go well, about doing it. This well, guy has never well he, he doesn't have a police record. He's he's never had any history. Yeah, but the cabin. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah but, uh, but the cabin, man. No, no, no. I think I look, I'm not saying he did. I'm just saying that is I think from the word go, right when I first heard that, it, to me it felt like a situation that especially uh, people like Renner was they're sweeping under the rug. And it's a serious act. You know, what he is stating that Haas said, that's serious. And that should be looked into. I mean, just with his job and everything, that, that should have been looked into. In, in all fairness, though, on our show, we said, we didn't say that, that Haas did it. But on our show, we said, you know what? If, if Mara was pregnant and if she was, in fact, heading to the cabin, Right. Then Haas would be our prime suspect with a big circle around it. Yeah, because who says that she has to be pregnant by Billy? Right. What if she's right. pregnant with Haas? Right. Haas's baby. So I, look, that's just a, that, that, those were the. If we had those two questions answered, then we would for us in the garage we would have our prime suspect. But it's like it's something that the captain and I talk about week after week. Every case we cover, there's usually one or two questions. If you just had the answer to that. You know, and it has nothing to, it, I think it would point you in the direction of who's responsible for what. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, there's totally a chance that Haas has absolutely nothing to do with uh, where Maura Murray ended up and has no idea. And maybe, you know, as, as James Renner wrote in his book, uh, she did say to him that I want to run away to Mexico but obviously didn't like we, you know, we've heard, I can't remember right. where, where I'm trying to remember, recall this from, but there was a story recently where someone said that and, or it was Brianna Maitland said, Oh, uh, we talked to her friend and she said she was going to go run away to Florida. And obviously that, that it wasn't what happened because her friend that she said it with was still there when Brianna Maitland went missing. So yeah, these weird things right. like that, like I want to run away to Mexico, they do happen. And that's not the end result. But I want to get back to something that Lance said about Renner. Do you think Renner is, uh, like like you mentioned, he, you know, he, he put it out there and he kind of leaves it open-ended. Do you think he does that because that's where he is in his reporting? Or do you think he does that because he has an agenda that he's pushing? Well, I, I don't want, uh, again, I, I respect the guy and, and he's, a, he's a sweetheart of a guy. Uh, to me, though, he's an author. And he's trying to create a story, whether that's fiction or nonfiction. He's trying to create a story. And and what what the captain means by that is well, don't he's, tell him. What, <laughs> I know what you mean by that. You're he. We're not saying that that he's fabricating things to create a story. He has to take what information he can gather. An assumption, maybe it's sometimes it's an assumption. I don't know, but he has to take what he can gather and put it together in story form. Yeah, but th- no, I no. What I meant is. I think sometimes, you know, if I say it this way, it's a better story. And I think he's just naturally, his, that's what, the way his brain works. This is a better story. Just like when he said to me, well, yeah, he's always one of my number one suspects. Yep. No, you brushed him under the rug months ago. And now that there's actual evidence that points that maybe we should look into this guy more. And then again, he said, well, you know what I think is funny is that uh, he talked to me before, and now he won't return my emails. Like, that's a big deal. Like, look, he might just not want to talk to you. You know, somebody not wanting to talk to you has no, that does not point to their innocence or guilt ever. Sometimes they just don't want to talk to you. I have a lot of emails (laughs) that I have not responded to. A lot of, from me. Yeah. From me.
Friends, I've discovered this new app, and I don't know if, if, if you're into this kind of thing, it, but it's called Chatbooks, and you upload all, all your pictures. I mean, I have a family, I'm uploading pictures of my kid, and I send it to Chatbooks in like five minutes, and they're already mailing me a photo album of all the photos that I sent to them. Well, you know my feeling on on uploading images of myself. I have I have some issues there. I think you're just getting self-conscious. I'm talking about pictures of, of my family, not just pictures of you shirtless, selfies at the gym, like all the pictures in your phone. I'm talking about pictures of my family and for those people out there listening, pictures of their family for like a coffee table book. Oh, okay. So what we're talking about is uh, uh, something that the family can look at. I like that. I mean, but what's, I mean, do you get some, some sort of benefit out of this? Is there a cost involved? I mean, it's got to be astronomical. 60 pages for only $8 and free shipping in the U.S. That's crazy. And I know you have taken at least 50 to 60 pictures of your family. Today. Today. Always. Any parent knows that their phones are just filled up with thousands of pictures of their kids. Right. Well, you know what? Pick, pick the best one or two from the batch, which is what I do, and then send them right to chat books, and you're going to have an awesome photo album. It automatically creates photo books from your Instagram, Facebook, or your camera roll. It's so easy. And you can have multiple photo sources in one book and multiple people adding photos to one book. Can you include caption, dates, and locations? Because that'd be cool as well. Yes, exactly. You can include captions, dates, and locations. Could you choose a uh, soft cover or hard cover? You could choose either soft cover or hard cover. There is no formatting and there's one picture per page. That's simple but classic. And you can get custom Custom books available in 6x6 or 8x8 size. Love it or get your money back. What, what, what do I have to do to get this? Because I started off this with thinking that, you know, this might not be for me. And now I'm thinking this is exactly for me. Get your first series book free with promo code MISSING. Go to chatbooks.com and get your first series book free with promo code MISSING. You know, we live in the true crime documentary golden age right now where, I mean, there's just, there's a new one coming out every month that you're supposed to not miss. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these making a murder, um, uh, we, I, you know, I can't think of a bazillion of them offhand. Oh, the keepers. But you will see this time and time again, where they're like, you know what the, the producers, the directors have. Much like what we're, what you guys are saying, maybe Jen Re James Renner has, where they have a theory, they have a position that they've taken when they decide to do this documentary. And then they say, you know what? We reached out to the psychiatrist that used to treat this guy. And, and he said or she said, well, I'm not returning your calls. I, I will not comment on that. Right. And then it, it, it paints the picture for the listener or the viewer that, oh, they're hiding something. And, you know, and I've told the captain a hundred times and he said it to me too. When we, when we've watched documentaries on cases we've covered and they're like, the doctor wouldn't talk. The psychiatrist wouldn't say anything. The whole medical building said no comment. And we've gone, you know what? If I were, if I were at that level too, mm -hmm. and I was in that situation, I would, I would have no comment. I, w I absolutely would have no comment. Why would I go on your show or your documentary? And then later you can cut the tape and you can skew it however you want to skew it, depending, even if I said the right thing 100% of the time, you can cut it and make it look like I'm hiding something or that I've done something wrong or I'm covering for people that have done wrong things. Yeah, but that being said, anybody that doesn't talk to you guys for your documentary is hiding something. Oh, they're totally hiding something. <laughs> so you're they, you're, the, one ex you're I mean, the one exception. We're, I mean, you guys, are, you got too much charm. If they don't talk to you, <laughs> they're soulless and they're guilty. I wish it was that simple, to tell you the truth. I wish it was that black and white. <laughs> I have had so much sex with old women just to get information. 
it 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 sickens wow, me man. right now to think about it, but I still kind of want to have more sex with old women. <laughs> okay. Uh, what about the uh, the announcement that uh, that and I don't want to make this the renter hour, but uh, since we're on the topic, um, it, something that that got announced last week was this uh, Johnny Depp production company is taking true crime addict james renner's book and turning it into a fictionalized version of his book for uh television well i i think they're buying the rights i don't know if they've actually started to adapt it it's oh yeah there's there's writing going on well in all fairness i mean johnny depp bought uh, the rights to a famous jazz bass player named uh, his story jocko pastorius and there's been rumors for 20 years that johnny depp is making adaptation um you know it'd be it's one of those cases where it's like i don't know i'll watch it because i'm obsessed with that case but it's going to be so hollywood that it's it's going to be more hollywood than james renner's book so yeah well i mean we'll we'll see about what the final uh the final look is on it uh whether it's kind of gritty or whether it's hollywood but a lot of people came out and they were they were like they were like I can't believe this uh, you know that son of a bitch and and I saw it and I was like awesome because yeah. it's about time that this you know this is just another development in this whole crowdsourcing information this whole true crime what we do and James Renner has you know what could be a, a deal with Johnny Depp's production company which is going to put it in front mm-hmm. of millions and millions of people's faces and and he's a fascinating character who got himself involved in a fascinating case and the more eyes the better and yeah. people people are you know people will draw their own conclusions about him based on that material and he's the one that has agreed to have that happen so whatever yeah. happens will happen okay well, what about uh let me throw a counterpoint uh it's they're not using maura murray's name and it's set in upstate new york they're not even using james renner's real name so what do you say to the people who say oh that james renner he was always about the money and he was never uh, in this to find maura and mm-hmm. this show isn't helping find maura mm-hmm. at all it's just helping him professionally well look i i think the I think the people, again, like I said, the people that hate him, they haven't met him. He's a nice guy. He drove over five hours to meet with guys he never met before. And and is that to sell books? Maybe, but he doesn't know our show. He doesn't know how many listeners we have. He didn't, he didn't know if he was showing up to be beat up by a couple guys he's never met before. You right. know? And, and at the end of the day, he's an author. And I respect him as a person. He's an intelligent person. So we should listen to his ideas. That doesn't mean you have to accept them, but you need to listen to them. And then if you want to talk about one of the best true crime books maybe ever written, True Crime Addict. And and everybody that reads it, even people that I know, even listeners of mine that have said, you, you how dare you put him on your show? And then three weeks later, they're like, that book was good. And at the end of the day, that's, he's an author and it, you know, uh, does he have a responsibility for the truth that that's on him and that's on his character, you know, but you know, does it make a better book? I don't know. It's a good book. It's an amazing book. When you look at the, um, the things that people do to enhance their careers, just in general, what he's doing really isn't so completely horrible you know the people people make him out to be just like this this like uh, maniac like ego ego maniac you know and and people do much what he's what he's ultimately doing is putting a lot more eyes on this case yeah well i'll tell you what i I, sorry i've been kind of sitting waiting to give an answer on this one the thing here is the question is johnny depp has purchased the rights or working on trans you know making this some, an adaptation of some kind of story into a movie, right? Did James Renner, did, is he selling out? James Renner used Mara Murray's name in his book. He used James Renner's name in his book. That's, that's his product was his book. He's not hiding the truth from you. Johnny Depp, if whoever's taking it and, and adapting it to a movie, changing the names, that's fine. And that's good because you got to put it on the screen. He has no, obligation after what they take his product and do with it 
he has not he has an obligation to himself as a career and his family to put food on the table and pay the bills. Mm-hmm. The thing here is James Renner writes just as good nonfiction as he does fiction books. His fiction books are incredible. He can write stories that do not have anything to do with real life that are amazing. And then furthermore, Johnny Depp is a great actor. He's a brilliant guy, but he's also been a guy that's done very well because of true crime. Donnie Brasco, the, uh, Jack, Jack, the Ripper. He's been in, uh, the Whitey Whitey Bulger. Bulger. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's done a lot of true crime movies that have done well for him and he's done well in those movies. So Mm -hmm. I, it's a win-win for everybody. If anybody's got a problem with it, I mean, come on. They they would sell the story themselves. I think that's one of those ones where I would say, check yourself because, because (laughs) you know what, go 110% on something for as long as you can. And then when you're done with it, sell it to everybody that's willing to buy it. Right. And then people, yeah. And, and at that point and people are saying, you know, I am sick of people profiting. I'm sick of looking at him profiting off of the case. It's it's like profiting. Really? 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 Like the time that someone puts into that and, and you actually do the math, that's not profiting at all. Like that's, that's that's just living. Like you said, he's got to put food on his family's, like he's got to pay his bills. He's got to do his, we all have to do that. So you're saying like if he got a job during the time that he spent writing the blog and writing the book, then he could have made potentially more money than he made making the book. And he wouldn't have raised awareness for this cold case that, may have become folklore right. by now if, if he hadn't done that. Is that what I, I don't, and he, Did I take and that what, a little too here's far? A weird, uh, here's a no. weird question for you, though, because it, the the funny thing about the, the Mara Murray community is they just jumped on him and hated him. Again, like I said, go back to his earlier work. All the stuff with Amy, that's a little kid he was trying to find justice for and not popular. He's going to write a book about her, and by the way, he's not going to make any money off of it. He's doing that for justice for a little kid. And for whatever reason, he got sucked into this case like we all did. And then for some reason, he's truthful about his opinions. And then everybody jumps down his throat like he's some like horrible person. So some of his thoughts and opinions might be wrong. It doesn't, but they but what's weird to me is they question his character. It's like that that's the craziest thing to me. It's like when we cover a case uh, you know, Casey Anthony or, or one of these, or like, uh, West Memphis three, or, you know, we, we've never done Adnan Syed's case yet because you can't, you, cause you can't win. Who's that? And it's like <laughs> Adnan Syed. Uh, but it's like, you can't cover those cases because if you're honest with your opinion on some of those people jump down your throat and then they start like attacking you, your character. And it's like, we might not agree on what happened in this case, but why are you attacking my character? And I don't understand why they do that with James, especially a guy that they never met. Um, well, here's the other thing, too. Uh, uh, and we'll have to move on after this one. But the thing here is Renner is he's a he's a little garage. If you want to hate somebody, hate the big box company, because Johnny Depp and whoever produces this movie, they've taken Mara Murray's name out of the show. They've taken it out of the story. They're going to make millions. Renner's made thousands, you know. That's what it is. Renner is listed as an executive producer. Well, he should change his mind. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. But you see what I. You, but I think you guys no, know but, what I'm saying. But Absolutely. Here's what, but here's what happens all the time, though. You know, in Hollywood, is you know, if they just looked at, you know, we always see these movies based on a true story. That's what it will be based on a true story, and he lived that life. So the book, True Crime Addict. Is, is more about what he was doing that in, in that time than it is just about the case or Mara Murray. So that is that is his story, and he has the right to tell his story. Right, and it also reflects the, the culture of the time with that genre. It, it reflects how one person, if, if it's James Renner or if it's me or Tim or you guys, how we get caught up in certain things and how those those effects lead to something else, which leads to something else, et cetera. And, yeah, and but, it, but, it, but hopefully it inspires more young authors and journalists you, you to go, just hey, you know You literally what? went into my throat and my brain and took the word. You just pulled them <laughs> out in such a – it was like you just you know dipped I mean? them in butter and pulled them out of my throat. 
Because, look, it's inspiring. I mean, I, I don't agree with a lot of his stuff with Mara Murray, but what's inspiring is a guy that devoted so much of his time and energy to try to find answers. Whether it, those answers are just for himself or for the greater good, who cares? The movie for True Crime Garage is totally for sale as long as George Clooney plays me and Carrot Top plays the captain. Nice. We have a, we have, we have a running joke that... Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> when, when True Crime Attic becomes a TV show, some for some reason I just know that Rick Moranis is playing me and and <laughs> Tay Diggs is playing Tim. I just know that's how it's going to happen. <laughs> I'm not going to throw out any theories here for, re, re, relating to Mara, but I will throw one thing in there that, that, that I always think about regarding her disappearance and her accident or, you know, the vehicle wrecking the vehicle that night and then disappearing. And the question of, did she take off of her own free will? Did she leave with somebody she knew? Was there, was there a tandem car? Did she get into another car? Did she walk away, run away, whatever. One conversation I had with the detective uh, back when we were covering the Brian Schaefer case was, you know, I I asked him, I said, do you have, this is a retired detective. I said, do you have any outstanding missing person? This is somebody that did missing persons. He said, I have one. And he said, I have one that has bothered me from the day that I got it because I thought it was easily, I I would find this guy. I said, well, why would you find him? He said, because he was last spotted driving his car. Well, a car is a very easy thing to trace. It has a VIN number. It might still have a license plate on it. It's, you know, unless you paint it, it's always going to be that color. And he said, you know, it's, what has bothered me so much about this case is we never found his car. You know, he said I, for 15 years, every couple of months, I would run it through the system to see if there was a traffic ticket on that car or if it was reported stolen or if it was reported in an accident. Nothing on this car forever. And it boggled his mind. And now the thing is, if you want to think about somebody, I don't know that she would be smart enough to plan this out. Mm-hmm. But if a car is a problem and the detective that I spoke to obviously sees that the car is the solution to finding the person, well, she walked away from that problem that she had, right? And I'm not throwing any theories out there. I'm not saying that that is my theory. I'm just saying it's something that I always go back to because he knew the detective I spoke with knew nothing about this Mara Murray case. I was just picking his brain on from his experience from from all the cases he's covered. Yeah, what was interesting was he actually talked to the detective, and then I got to talk to the detective again. And his first question to me was, why is this mer- missing person case so popular? And I was like, and I, could, I didn't have much of a reason to give him other than it just kind of takes on, once you get sucked in, you're just sucked in forever. I mean, to this day, I mean, whenever you guys' documentary comes out, let me know. I'll, I'll go to. I want to go to the showing. I'll, I'll drive wherever. Oh, um, awesome! You'll be hearing about uh, it. And yeah. so, so I, you know, I, I think the interesting thing about Mara Murray's case is I, for us, and I'm not for sure. I mean, we might have gave some opinions, but I think they were loose. It's a case for us where we're like, we don't really know, and I, I think that's okay answer to give sometimes. Yeah. Because we just don't know, you know. Oh. Oh, it's absolutely okay. Not only is it okay, it's the it's the most responsible answer that you can give if you've gone as deep as right. as we've gone in it. You you cannot go this far and say, No, this is how it happened because you don't know. Right. There's no way you can know. And and everyone's like, Well, what do you think happened? It's like I I know what I think I know leading up to it and what I think I yeah, know. And that's a, but that's a weird thing about doing a true crime show is like, you know, a lot of people that are tuning in, uh, we'll get a, a lot of requests, but the qu- requests that we're getting are, are cases that are already big that already people talked about, but, but you become their friends and they want to know their friends opinions on certain things. And, and I think we actually have a really nice group of friends, group of listeners that, they're willing to, we, you know, because there's two of us, so we disagree sometimes. And they're willing to let us slide on some of our opinions. And 
not always do we do like you said do the responsible thing by not giving an opinion you know sometimes we say we don't know and then other times we just go my gut is telling me with all the evidence and every which way it's pointing my gut is telling me this 